Good morning. Hello, YouTube family. It is Rev. Wendy here with the Community of Compassion, and welcome to my spirit talk. Uh, today is Sunday, October the 11th, and I am excited to be with you as always. I so appreciate uh, joining with you each and every week to talk about motivational, inspirational topics that can get us from one week to the next. And so um, we are coming down to the wire in terms of some changes uh, on the horizon for us. And so I hope that you all will stick with me. Hi, Kim, good morning. I hope that you all will stick with me and we will stick together because uh, we're, we don't know what's about to happen, right? We, we really don't. Um, the election is approaching, of course, in just 23 days now. And uh, the polls are up and then they're down. And then there's um, pundits and prognosticators and uh, armchair quarterbacks that are all have made up in their minds that they can tell us exactly how things are gonna turn out. But we know that we cannot trust anything that we're hearing, that we have to do our part, do what we need to do. Uh, to make sure and get the outcome that we want. So I hope that you all have voted or are voting. What's your plan? What's your plan? So many states have early voting. We had that uh, We had that here in DC, uh, though we're not a state yet, but we do have that, um, you know, mail-in, absentee, whatever it is, make sure you have a plan and make sure you carry that plan out. That's all I'm gonna really say <laughs> about the election, but participate. You know, because I've heard people say you have no right to complain if you didn't participate. So make sure that you have a, a strategy in mind for what you plan to do to help us move from this phase that we've been in to the next one. So that's that. All right. So, you know, today I want to talk a little bit. I had mentioned it last week that I was going to start a series about how to live without regrets. Now. <laughs> that uh, can seem like an impossibility. And I am not suggesting in this series, which I will start, that we will ever be in a situation where we don't regret some things. Some regrets can be healthy. I wish I would have done that differently. I wish I would have made a different choice in that moment. And perhaps if I had done that, I would have had a different outcome. Those regrets are healthy. But there are other regrets that we get to later on in life that we allow to bring us down and bring us to a point like, wow, if I hadn't done that, maybe my life wouldn't be in this particular situation. And so today I just wanna talk about ways that we can get to a place where we recognize that everything that happens in our life happens for a reason to a, to a certain degree. So we get the power, we get the opportunity to determine how we perceive and how we respond to the things that happen in our lives. So when things happen, situations, and you, you look at it and you say, oh man, I wish I would have done that differently. Well, I've always been told that opportunities that happen in our lives, situations that happen, can either be determined as a blessing or a lesson. <laughs> so either it was a blessing because it happened the way you wanted it to and you got the outcome that you wanted, or it didn't quite turn out the way you wanted it to, but there's a lesson in it that you were able to take from it and therefore uh, carry that forward and not find yourself um, living with as much regret as possible. Now, in the context that I'm speaking today, I'm going to talk about people who are a little bit older because I found that people who are older sometimes have, uh, have a tendency to have more regrets than maybe the young because younger people feel like, I, you know, maybe I didn't choose what I wanted to, but I've got plenty of time. I can choose differently. I can, I can make up, you know, for what I did. Um, people who get older tend to feel a little bit less uh, optimistic about changing their circumstances or they 
reflect on their lives. They start to reflect on if they had made a particular choice, would their lives have been different? And I think it's healthy to do that where I think we get over into things that aren't healthy is when we start to beat ourselves up and when we start to blame ourselves for um, the, the, the plight that has happened. Because at the end of the day, life happens. And I like what you're saying there, Kimberly, right? Hindsight is always 2020. But you, you do, you're, you get grateful for the things that you learn along the way. And you take those things and you share them <laughs> with other people uh, so that they can gain insight from them. Now, gaining insight from what you are sharing doesn't always mean that they're going to take your advice. Uh, if you are a parent, you know <laughs> that when you uh, share certain um, experiences with your kids and you're like, listen, don't do that. I did that. And here's how it turned out for me. Most times kids are like, yeah, that was you, but that doesn't mean it's going to happen for me that way. So they go ahead and they kind of ignore your advice. <laughs> so I'm not talking about those instances. What I'm talking about is just us in particular and personally. When something happens, yes, hindsight is 2020, but just know that everything is designed and every single thing that has happened in your life to this day has shaped you into the person that you are right now. So when I look back over my life and I see some things that aren't very glowing <laughs> and aren't very positive and things that if I had had a choice in the matter, <laughs> I probably would have you know, chosen differently. But when I look at those things and I keep them in context um, and in perspective, they all were a part of the journey. They all were a part of becoming who I am today. And so you can look back on them with gratefulness and you can say, I did the best that I could with the information that I had at the time. And because of the choice that I made, whether it was positive or negative, I learned, I grew, I'm different, I evolved, I changed, and now my life is richer having had the experience. Does that make sense? So that's what I wanna encourage today. You know, when I was a chaplain, a hospital chaplain, uh, I spent a lot of time at the bedside of patients who actually were closer to the end of life. Many of them um, had had diagnoses of terminal illnesses, um, they were very aware of their mortality. And, you know, it's when we find ourselves in situations like that, maybe not life threatening, but, but ones where we are really concerned about our future. That's typically when regrets start to come up in terms of, wow, what did I, what did I do to to get myself to this place? And is there something I could have done differently? These folks that I used to talk to at their bedsides in the hospital, they were more so feeling some regrets about not material decisions that they made or missed out on, but more so about the loss of quality time that they felt like they did not take advantage of when they were healthier. And so uh, a young woman wrote a book about having no regrets and living a life of no regrets based on some older patients that she talked to. And it was so familiar to me. I just wanted to share a couple of those examples with you today, just so that you can sort of locate what I mean when I'm talking about getting on and, and older in life and perhaps thinking back on some things that you could do differently. And the reason why they shared these regrets, if you will, is so that other people could benefit from them. So one of the things that um, they talked about, and I'll pull that up. <clears throat> one of the primary responses that some of the folks uh, talked about as feeling like a regret in their life uh, was this, this. They said, I wish I'd had the courage to live a life true to myself, not the life others expected of me. 
talking about people who were facing perhaps the end of their lives and they're facing perhaps the end of their lives and they were expressing some regrets about if they had it to do all over again, one of the first things they would have done would have lived their lives truer to themselves and truer to what they wanted and not uh, to live up to the expectation of others. And so I'm going to present that to you all today, just so that we can get to a place where we don't even have to have these conversations. So I'm going to ask you questions as I go through these few steps on living a life with no regret. So are you right now living a life that is true to yourself? and not based on the expectation of how other people think or feel you should be living. You tell me. I thought about that myself because there is a tendency for people to think that by a certain age, I should be doing this, I should have this, I should possess this. And that's not always uh, the case for everybody, that's not always possible for every person. So ask yourself, are you living the life that you want to live right now, a life that's true to yourself and not the one that others expected of you? If not, get on it, <laughs> get on it so that you don't find yourself in a place later on where you are regretting that and feeling like there were some other things that you wanted to do with your life and in your life but you allowed others and others' expectations to prevent you from doing that. So do it. Let's let's you know take charge of our lives. I can remember when I wanted to move away and come to college. So you, uh, some of you may know, I'm from Ohio originally, and um, I love Ohio. All my family is still there. But when it came time to go to college, uh, people in Ohio really discouraged me from from leaving the state. I wanted to go out, explore, and I ultimately came here to Washington DC to attend Howard University. And looking back on that decision, it changed the entire trajectory of my life. So I'm grateful that I did that. But there were so many people who were discouraging me from doing that, from you know saying, stay home, stay close. You don't need to go to those big bad cities where they have lots of crime and everything. Just, just be here. You don't you don't need to move far away from your mom, um, stay close by. And so if I were somebody who was more interested in pleasing others and other family members and their expectations, I may have stayed in Ohio and gone to Ohio State. Not a bad school, love the Buckeyes. But I, even then, even at 17 years old, knew that I wanted to live a life true to myself and not one that was based and rooted in the expectation of others. You know what it takes to live a life like that? It takes courage. So I encourage each and every one of you today, it's never too late to live the life that is true to yourself and not one that is solely rooted in the expectations of other people. You do that, you will have less regrets growing older. One of the other regrets that was expressed by some of the people that uh, were talking um, toward the end of their lives, they said, you know, I wish I had had the courage to express my feelings. Now, let me say this. Expressing our true feelings does take a tremendous amount of courage. And if you are somebody such as myself who likes to keep the peace, who likes things to be balanced and harmonious, I'm a Libra, it's, it's in my nature. Uh, you can, and I'm speaking for myself, have a tendency sometimes to suppress how you feel truly in order to keep the peace. And I used to do that. And I, until I learned that that's not healthy, and that's not helpful. Anytime you are honoring your own voice, you are expressing it and demonstrating courage. What you have to say and what you want to contribute may not be popular, but it is valid. 
And so today I want to encourage you to not regret or get to a place where you regret never having expressed your true feelings. Your true feelings and expressing those is a part of who you are at your core. And sometimes people will suppress how they really feel for a long period of time until later on, then they'll explode out of resentment because they've been holding on to their own voice. They've been minimizing and diminishing their own voice at the expense of keeping other people happy. Don't do that. Your happiness does not have to come at the expense of other people's, neither does your voice. So speak up. If there's a situation where it's tense, just be respectful, but don't forget that your feelings matter and they need to be expressed as well. So speak up, have the courage, express yourself. Now, one of the other things they mentioned is they wished that they had had um, more time with their family and more time with their friends. We, I think, have learned one thing in this pandemic <laughs> that this pandemic has certainly taught us is the importance of family, friendships, and relationships and how those had kind of gotten lost in the hustle and the bustle of our daily lives. I don't know about you, but we can get so bogged down and so busy in life and the things that we are doing, we let our relationships suffer. We don't keep in touch with each other. I mean, social media has re replaced so much of our interaction that relationships just seem different and they seem frayed, but there is nothing that can replace the actual human interaction and connection that we foster with each other. We are created for connection. We're hardwired for it. And so we don't want to get to the end of our lives and the end of our days and say, I wish I would have stayed more in touch with my friends. Do that now. Do that with your family now, if possible. And if you're family relationships are strayed, create new ones, create bonds. Family is more than blood. Family is connection. And so make sure that you are fostering and nurturing healthy friendships and connections with people because those are priceless. And when we get to the end of our lives, we want to be able to say that we stayed in touch we nurtured those connections, we nurtured those friendships so that we're not alone and lonely in the end. And finally, a lot of the people who were asked about uh, what they would have done differently if they had more time said, I wish I had let myself be happier. I wish I had let myself be happier. I get that. Sometimes we don't um, take advantage of the opportunity to, to just be happy, to do the things that, that make us feel full and make us feel, feel joyful. And certainly in the midst of what we're going in right now, uh, happy moments are, are few and far between. And I recognize that and I honor that. But I want to say that eventually, eventually, God willing, eventually, we're going to come out of this. We're going to come out of it. We're going to come out on the other side and we're going to come out stronger. And we're going to come out having had the opportunity to do some deep reflection on our lives, on what is, um, what our priorities are, what matters most. And so I'm asking today and I'm praying that despite everything that we've gone through this year, and here we are at near at the end, we're 10 months in to one of the most difficult years that we've ever had. Take a moment to readjust, to reshape your thinking so that when we come out, we come out on the other side. Yes, Kimberly, practicing gratitude helps with happiness. It helps with everything. So rather than reflecting on all that we've lost, we've lost a lot. I should say rather than what I will suggest is that in addition to reflecting on that which we've lost, 
Let us find things that we can have gratitude for that we've been able to hold on to in these moments. Living a life of no regret. I am going to fully appreciate all of the experiences life that has brought to me, to be grateful for the ones that I can, to take lessons from the ones that weren't so positive. But at the end of the day, I am going to appreciate that everything that has happened in my life, in your life, in our lives, has contributed to the dynamic human being that you are today. Live that life with no regrets. You are exactly where you're supposed to be and you are exactly who you are supposed to be. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining me on this Sunday. Have an awesome rest of the week. Please share this video, like, subscribe. I, I really appreciate it. As always, you come through during the week and you drop comments and messages and it just brightens my day. So thank you for joining me. Have a wonderful Sunday, a wonderful week. And I'll see you here next Sunday, same time. Thank you. Have a good one.